Well, hello, everyone, and good afternoon or good evening or good morning, depending on where you're joining us from today. Welcome to Engineering for Change, or E4C for short. Today, we're very pleased to bring you a special segment in E4C's 2016 webinar series focusing on mobile data collection. My name is Yana Aranda, and I'm the Director of Programs here at E4C, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'd like to take a moment now to tell you about the webinar that you are joining today and as our, and our mobile data collection series. The widespread availability of mobile communications offers international development researchers, practitioners, and students new tools and techniques for collecting field data and determining success of projects. So we've partnered with the Development Impact Lab at UC Berkeley, or DOE, for a series of six webinars to introduce a sample of survey software tools and demonstrate how to implement each tool in practice. For a recorded introduction to the series, we invite you to visit the E4C homepage. Today's webinar is the fourth in the series, featuring Voto Mobile, introduced by Melissa Prasad, who is the Regional Director of Programs for the organization. Our next webinar will be with Premise Data on April 7th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like to make a recommendation for a specific platform, future topics, and speakers, we invite you to contact the series team via the email addresses visible on this slide. Now, before we get started, I'd like to tell you a bit about E4C and who we are. E4C is a knowledge exchange platform and global community of over 1 million engineers, designers, development practitioners, and social scientists leveraging technology to solve quality of life challenges faced by underserved communities worldwide. We invite you to join E4C by becoming a member. E4C members enjoy access to relevant and current news, professional development resources, including this webinar series and jobs and fellowships, and a growing database of hundreds of poverty alleviating products in our solutions library. E4C delivers a unique user experience based on user site behavior and engagement. Essentially, the more you interact with our site, the better we are able to serve you resources that meet your needs and interests. We invite you to join our passionate global community and contribute to making people's lives better across the world. Please check out our website to learn more and sign up. We're excited to collaborate with Dill on this and future webinars. Dill is an international consortium of universities, research institutes, NGOs, and industry partners addressing global poverty through advances in science and engineering. DIL is headquartered at the University of California, Berkeley, and was launched in 2012 with support from the U U.S. Agency for International Development through the U.S. Global Development Lab. This leverages the innovative capacity of world-class universities to design development solutions which couple new technologies with novel economic and behavioral interventions. DIL calls this approach development engineering. Now, the webinar you're participating in today is part of E4C's professional development offerings. Our webinar series is a real-time and on-demand resource showcasing the best practices and thinking of development practitioners. <clears throat> Information on upcoming installments in the series, as well as archived videos of past presentations, can be found on the E4C webinars page. The address is listed here, also on our YouTube channel. If you're following us on Twitter today, I'd also like to invite you to join the conversation with our dedicated hashtag, hashtag E4C webinars. Now, a few housekeeping items before we get started. Let's see where everyone is from today. In the chat window, uh, which is located at the middle part of your screen over here, please type in your location. And I'll get us started here. All right, here I am from New York, New York. Yes, Washington, D.C., thank you. Um, and naturally, we have some folks from California. Um, in the chat window, you should be sharing any comments you have, anything you want to share with the rest of the participants. If the chat window is not open on your screen, you can access it by clicking the icon at the top right corner. Any technical questions or administrative problems should go in this chat window as well. For Asking questions to the presenter, please use the Q&A window, which is located immediately below the chat. If you don't see this, you can click uh, the icon again on the top right-hand side. If you are listening to the audio broadcast and you encounter any troubles, try hitting stop and then start. You may also want to try out the opening WebEx in a different browser. Following the webinar, to request a certificate of completion for one professional development hour, please follow the instructions on the top of the E4C professional development page. 
So with that, I'd like to take a moment now to introduce Melissa Prasad, uh, who is the Regional Director of Programs for Envoto Mobile, um, Ghana and U.S.-based mobile engagement social enterprise. Uh, Melissa builds and maintains partnerships with impact-oriented organizations in order to improve their choices to more voices around the globe. Personally, Melissa has a passion for global design, for program design, apologies, and implementation, mobile for development, and financial inclusion. She has a master's degree in development practice from the School of International and Public Affairs at Columbia University here in New York City, and a BA from Lafayette College. So with that, I turn it over to Melissa to tell us a little bit more about Voda Mobile. Thank you. Thank you for that warm introduction. Um, once again, my name is Melissa Persad, and I'm Regional Director of Programs with Voto Mobile, and I am based in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'll spend today talking a bit about Voto, what we do, how we do it, dive deeper into one case, and then hopefully leave plenty of room for questions and hopefully give you enough fodder for a fruitful discussion. Um, and I thank you for for, for coming on today to the webinar. I know webinars can be challenging in some of the locations that we work in. Uh, so to begin, Voto Mobile is, is a social enterprise that really focuses on two-way communication. So not only are we communicating out to individuals, pushing information out, but also collecting information back. And for me, that's the most exciting part, that feedback communication, uh, um, as we call it you know, today, the hot topic in most development. And so, as an organization, we're working with development practitioners, we're working with companies, individuals, governments to connect the three billion disconnected people out there in the world who are disconnected from services uh, that, that everyone has, has a right to, to be connected to. So what's the challenge? Why aren't people connected? We have challenges of literacy and language, infrastructure and distance. So you think about how we're connecting to the rural populations, uh, women traditionally underheard and mar marginalized groups, they're facing unique challenges in communicating with those who are trying to communicate with them or provide services to them. Uh, and and those, those challenges can also come with a cost, both financially and, and time. So we were founded out of the, the, the need for that communication and then pairing that need with this new technology, the mobile phone that is almost ubiquitous uh, around the world, has, has, has provided us with a new opportunity to reach the underheard. As we know, mobile penetration rates are on the rise. Almost everyone has a phone and when our co-founders work working in Ghana and trying to connect people to services, they really saw this as an opportunity and, and it, still, it, it still is today. And when I talk about the mobile phone, I'm talking about the feature phone, just accepting and sending text messages and voice messages, voice calls. Uh, it's, it's as straightforward as that. Of course, you can get more complex, but that's the baseline of what we're talking about today. Of course, the mobile phone is not new, and we've probably been talking about mobiles and development for about you know 10 years, and there are still pieces that aren't working. So the first generation of mobile for development really focused on text messaging or SMS, and that, that had a lot of power. It was cost effective. It reached a lot of people, but it's text-based. And so when you think about the traditionally underheard and marginalized Literacy is an incredible barrier, and SMS still did not connect those individuals to to who to the the services that we're talking about today. Um, additionally, the software was being developed custom in house for a specific project for a specific need, and that done at an individual level is costly. It's time consuming and you know, generally inefficient. Also, one thing that's sometimes overlooked is that when you're using a mobile phone, there are infrastructure investments and connections and negotiations with mobile network operators and tel telcos. And that piece also <laughs> is time consuming and was a, was a barrier for a lot of projects. It delayed a lot of projects. When everyone's trying to take that initiative on on their own, it's just 
another um, point of inefficiency. And then when you're doing something for the first time on your own without any expertise, it's, it's hard to get right the first time. Um, you know, at Voto, we are the mobile engagement experts. We are by no means content experts. And so when you, when we work together, we're leveraging both of our expertise to enhance projects. And when you're trying to be an expert at everything, I think we know, we know the consequences of that all too well. So what we're doing is transcending literacy barriers by reaching people in their own language without written text. So moving away from text messaging, while we offer text-based solutions, we really focus on the power of voice. And when I'm talking about voice, the, the technology is called IVR, Interactive Voice Response. But really, it's, it's, it's a voice call. It's a, it's a recorded audio recording being sent out as a phone call. And then we're, and why are we doing that? Obviously, literacy is no longer an issue. You can record content in as many languages and send out content tailored to that person's preferences, which adds a whole new layer of, of interaction and, and value to, to the, for, for the participant. Then you also have our Voto platform. So at votomobile.org, you can create an account today. I encourage everyone to do so. I can give you some extra credit to play around with. And that simple reusable tool at votomobile.org is what we're, is our core product. It's where every mobile engagement project we are working on is built. And that means we're doing health projects, agriculture, research, citizens engagement and democracy and governance. We're working with our partners on one tool, one platform to serve all of these sectors. We're establishing these connections with mobile network operators ourselves, taking that labor off of your plate, off of anyone's plate, taking that on and making sure that those connections are happening, they're reliable, and they're affordable for our partners. And then that last piece, really taking all of our experience thus far and being thoughtful about our design and mobile engagement. We're helping all of our partners and researchers adapt a typical paper-based intervention and putting it on mobile. You know, the order of questions may not be the same. The types of questions may have to be adapted a bit. And that's where we're, we're really adding value as, as a Voto team and in the partnership between us and, and, our, and our, our partners. <laughs> and when we think about the lessons learned and all of the work that we're doing, it really falls into two buckets across all sectors, evidence gathering and behavior change. And when you think about that, they are, they can be connected, they can be separate, but those are the two categories of work. Evidence gathering could be as simple as a, a survey pushed out once to a group of people to understand current behavior, current attitudes, uh, all the way to ongoing reporting throughout a project. You could imagine um, a community health worker client satisfaction survey going out once a month to everyone who is in the community health workers network um, to increase accountability, understand the, the quality of service, and you know, identify unmet need. And then in the behavior change component, when we think about behavior change, there's one piece, right? There's, there's the communication piece, the, the outgoing information sharing piece, which you can easily do with voice messaging and text messaging uh, across the board, right? Sending out a call is very easy. The piece that we find really interesting is pairing that with what the follow-up question. So un really measuring that change in behavior. And that's a piece that you can still do on mobile and we're constantly exploring new ways to collect self-reported data, validate that information, and, and move forward. And, uh, you know, when we're doing this work, we're doing it through voice because of this. Because you look at the participation rates comparing text message engagement to voice message engagement, 
and participa participation excuse me is quite is just so much higher we're getting more women voices we're getting more rural voices overall participation people are just sharing more information and they're listening more to the content with 35 uh, percent participation we're much more satisfied that with the res with the data collected than with you know, a three or four percent response rate on, a, on an SMS based survey or a text message based survey. And the final piece that I'll add on, just to push on the, the power of voice a little bit more is the types of data we can collect. So when you think about a text message, it goes out, it's sent. That's about all you know. When you have voice messaging, there's this whole layer of what we call passive data that you can observe on the Voto platform to see how people are engaging with your survey or your project. You could see how many times it takes to pick a, to get someone to answer the phone, even though they've scheduled, they've picked their selected time to be reached. Um, you can measure content consumption, so how many seconds did they stay on the phone? In the case of a survey, where did they hang up? How many questions did they get through? And then you can think, you can look at the time of day. Where, when is it best to reach that person, even though they, they've selected their, their preferred time of day? Uh, or in cases where they haven't selected their preferred time of day, we can make adjustments to projects to call them through their kind of past activity. And then you're pairing that with the active data. Obviously, this is the, this is the answers to the questions you're ask, asking, right? what people are self-reporting in terms of behavior change, if they're talking about attitudinal shifts, you can do ongoing panel surveys once a month to understand how people are reacting to uh, radio programming that you're, you're you know, pushing out through traditional uh, development projects. You can evaluate citizens' priorities. You could use that as a panel as well, or you could just do it as a one-time survey somewhere and somewhere in between. And then obviously informing future programming. You can ask questions about what works and what doesn't work for the participant. And so in pairing, really uh, in pairing these two with the power of voice, you end up with just much more interesting data uh, that, that, that can result in even better projects. So I'll stop, uh, I'm gonna shift gears now that I've done a bit of background and dive into a, a little case study of a project we did that we're very proud of. And this was a Voto-led project. Um, basically, what we did was take your Mobile Alliance for Maternal Action content. So Mama created a curriculum for pregnant women. And we translated it into about five, four or five different local languages in northern Ghana enrolled about 8,000 women into the project, and they received timed curriculum uh, based on their expected due date. So uh, you would imagine, you know, the call went out every Wednesday at noon, but Mother A was at week 27 of her pregnancy, so she got week 27 message, and Mother B was at uh, she had given birth already, so she was at her after birth messaging, but all receiving it at the same time during that same week. Um, and so the really, this is where we're looking at, I'm gonna show you two examples. This first slide is about the passive data. And then the, the next slide is looking at the active data. And then we're gonna put it all together. Uh, when you look at the passive data. This is what we call engage, our engagement rates, which is the average percent of the messages listened to by week. So on average, we, we had about 74% consumption of the MAMA content, so in general. And then but every week we could look and see how much people were, what people were listening to and how much they were consuming and start asking questions. So here you can see like there are dips and, and we were wondering why was this less interesting. So it, it triggered us as, as the implementers to react very quickly and see, hey, what's the problem here? Let's do a deeper dive. Our reaction was to add in one question at the end of each message asking 
it was a rotation, so it was one of three options. Was this message useful to you? Did you understand this message? And would you refer this project to a friend? Those three questions, one of those three questions now were tacked on to every message that went out. And the results were really interesting. So you have this graph here where we're showing how people rated the usefulness of each message. And you can see with it, you know, which weeks performed really well and which did not. And you imagine this happening on an ongoing basis. So in real time, I can look at this week's people's reactions to their message this week and say, hey, everyone who got week 40 of pregnancy this week didn't like it. It was not useful to them. How can I adapt? And that pairing, so the trigger was the, the passive data. Then we started collecting some active data to understand more. And then together, those two pieces of information helped us create a better program that really yielded some interesting results. Right? So in Northern Ghana, or in Ghana overall, the, expect, uh, the, the uh, rates of attended birth is about 57%. The women who participated in our project self-reported 86% of them had given birth at a clinic. And that's staggering. It's, I mean, we were so impressed. And also, the, the satisfaction in general with the project and the program, they're very, everyone's very happy. Our, we call it the net, you know, well, we don't call it, everyone calls it the net promoter score. So was this, you know, would you refer this to a friend? 93% of them said yes. And so by pairing the active and passive data, we can see behavior change. Granted, it is not, there was no, uh, it was not set up as an experiment, but it is the beginnings of a really interesting, uh, a, a really interesting work that we are hoping to expand into more robust research and working with researchers such as yourself to do so. So I, I will say that the we are now in this world of active and passive data across all sectors, learning so much and sharing those learnings across sectors, removing those, breaking down those silos between subject matter and saying, hey, this is how to reach the right person at the right time. I will, that's the end of the case. I will just briefly show you a snapshot of our platform. This is where any intervention is designed. Um, it, it, we call it trees. It's basically a flow. You can design your conditional logic and, and see how you can kind of just flow through a survey. You can see there are three types of questions, multiple choice, numeric, and open-ended questions. These three questions can then be kind of stretched to <laughs> any um, imaginable use. Uh, you, you know, you could, you could use the, the NPS, the Net Promoter Score of, you know, how satisfied are you on a scale of one to five, uh, and have people enter one, two, three, four, five. You could have people enter their age, you know, instead of having to put people into brackets of, of ages, so ranges, you could just ask them their age to enter that. And then open-ended questions allows you to have this qualitative data experience over the mobile phone. So now you've had, you've had participants complete a survey and you want to have a, basically a comments section, right? Is there anything you'd like to add? And people can just speak into the phone their voice is recorded, and you can listen to it on the platform. And then the, that audio file can be translated, transcribed, used in, in, in more qualitative analysis. So that I, will, I, will I will stop here because I've been talking for, for quite a bit. Um, we have, but in conclusion, there's the pairing of active and passive data using voice messaging to find some very interesting uh, triggers for, for adapting projects and then influencing some significant results. And all of that can be done at votomobile.org in partnership with us and our, our implementation team. So I'll pause here. I have plenty of cases I could talk about.
Um, and I will leave my contact information here as we go through Q&A, but feel free to email me as you think through any challenges or research questions you may have in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. This has uh, been a very uh, contextual overview of photo of mobile and what you've been able to achieve. So we already have a, a question that's popped up, so I'm going to address that one first and I encourage anybody else who has questions out there to enter them in the Q&A window, please. So um, relative to how uh, you engage with survey takers, uh, the question here is if you ask them to respond to the SMS, don't you have the same feedback data as if you use IVR and for those who are not sure what IVR is, I believe it's interactive voice response. Um, do you get the same? So, well, I will say the with SMS, there's a character limit to begin with, right? So you're at 160 characters, and if you're typing in a different language, that, num that number actually can be smaller because of accents and characters, taking up just more character space. So there's that piece. It does still require some level of literacy and honestly more understanding of how to type on a phone. Mm -hmm. Using IVR, you're able to, it's, it's quite simple, right? It's press one, press two, enter your age. It's, it's a few pushes rather than having to write out your thoughts and your responses via f phone. So those are the, 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 the main reasons. Uh, and then the last point is cost. Mm -hmm. it's co text messages can still be costly for the respondent, which is a barrier. Uh, mm -hmm. With voice messaging, we can use a missed call feature or flashing or beeping, or depending on your context, whatever, your call, whatever the locals are calling it, where you call right. into a phone number hang up and the platform then calls them back and their response is free to them. Or you call mm -hmm. them directly and they, as, a, as receiving the call, it's free to them. Mm -hmm. um, and it happens all in one instance. So I pick up the phone, I complete the survey, I hang up. If I'm texting mm -hmm. and there's service cuts out or there's a delay in the message back to me, I get distracted. Really the likelihood of me completing a survey as a participant decreases significantly. Is there just uh, kind of building on that question a little bit, um, and I'm not uh, suggesting that you have this available immediately yeah. at hand, but uh, could you direct some of our listeners to resources where there's data behind some of uh, these kind of anecdotes or these, these specific findings that you've had in the field? Yeah, so, so a likelihood of response or mm -hmm. what? Yeah, a, a comparison is hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on that. <laughs> So we, in some of our national survey work, we've uh, we worked with the Center for Global Development, and they've published a working paper on national representative sampling using mobile phone, mobile surveys, uh, and that's powered by the Voto platform. So I would encourage people to look at that. Um, it's not, it does show some costing information for voice surveys, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but in terms of comparing, I I will do some more research. It's something that we think about every day, and I, I don't know anything offhand. But as I come across them, I will definitely be sharing it with you. That's fantastic. And for anybody who's listening who is doing research work in this area or has interest, maybe this is something that you can uh, also investigate and feel free to share with us. We are going to be publishing an article after the series is complete featuring uh, the platforms that we've highlighted as well as others and would be happy to include those resources as part of that overview. So uh, another question has come in and um, this one is uh, quite specific. So relative to this organization, um, they, the question is their biggest issue with data gathering is trust. So many people have worked in Kibera, in Kibera, in Nairobi, that participants simply tell the survey person that they think the interview, what the interviewer wants to hear. What have you found with trust issues in IVR? So again, this is anecdotal to date. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, we're scratching at the surface and really trying to be more rigorous when we come across these, these kind of inklings and, and insights. Um, the the real 
what we understand is that people are more likely to provide information about taboo subjects using I IVR than they mm -hmm. are um, to give that information face to face or to a person calling them, so a, hu a human on the phone, rather than mm -hmm. the pre recorded kind of menu that they're navigating. And uh, and as we are working more and more in sensitive areas, so where I have, we have a few projects that are starting up in you know, the gender-based violence space, we'll be able to glean more insights on, in terms of trust. And, and we, we kind of know it inherently. People are just sharing more information over the voice mm -hmm. messaging. But, um, but the, the, the proof has... <laughs> The, the rigorous analysis has not happened yet. Mm -hmm. Next step. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, another question more from the practitioner perspective and those who are looking to use VotoMobile for their uh, work, um, can you speak at all to the costing structure for uh, the, the users? Yes. So mm -hmm. there is... Basically, on the platform today, you could send a call anywhere in the world, and it's, the platform will charge you uh, a marked-up airtime rate. So that's at the mm -hmm. basic level. As I mentioned, there's a, there, there are a lot of learnings on kind of order of questions and how to reach out and mm -hmm. engage with individuals through their mobile phones. And we found that our, our, our partners are just, just much more successful if they engage with us for, even for a short term to, de to do the co-design and then kind of run off with it on their own. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it, the pricing kind of, it ranges between $1,000 and $5,000 a month for mm -hmm. the co-design, co-creation, platform, full platform access, you know, ability to have two-way communication, all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and the range is so big because it really comes down to volume. Right. Right. Thank you. That's, that's very helpful. We have another question oh, relative to other platforms. So how does Voto Mobile platform compare technically with that of a group like Medic Mobile? Is it open data is it open data source or ODK? Yeah, so uh, so we have so Medic Mobile is a great platform. We are d different in the sense that we're more on the, the messaging side of things, um, but we can connect, we have connected with existing platforms that are doing, you know, tracking, tracking information or doing patient uh, management so that they can roll up their messaging to one source, right? So mm -hmm. you could design a, a messaging camp. An example would be like an adherence uh, campaign, so you're, you've or adherence initiative, excuse me. So you 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 uh, need to take your blood pressure medicine every day, and then you need to get your blood pressure taken once a month at the clinic. And so all of these behaviors can be encouraged through messaging. And then when mm -hmm. you when you do not take action, let's say you do not show up to the clinic, it could trigger a call to say, hey, come to the clinic, it's your time, remember, and kind of keep reminding and getting people to, to take action. Then mm -hmm. all of that information could be rolled up into the, the other tech tool, so something like Medic Mobile or something that's doing like patient management, like mm -hmm. ComCare. And uh, ODK is interesting, so that's like a tab, it's the it's the way you would design a tablet or a smartphone survey, mm -hmm. and we've worked with ODK to de to basically design a survey that enumerators use when they go out, and uh, and in one of those pieces one of the pieces of data they collect is a phone number, and then the phone number is connected to Voto, and all of that the data collected face to face using ODK. And mm -hmm. the data collected through Voto Mobile are synced up, and you have a full participant profile. 
So we are kind of a piece of the puzzle complementary to these types of technologies, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, are quite different. Got you. Got you. And um, a few more questions coming in here. Do users of mobile phones know how to use touch tone response uh, or slash voice surveys? Yeah, it's a great question. There, I mean, of course, it's context specific, but it's quite intuitive. Um, mm -hmm. We have been doing some work with the World Bank on trying to figure out uh, on some sensitization and training on how to navigate the survey. Particularly mm -hmm. in, this is really um, easy and useful to do when you have a high touch situation. So there's someone, you have either enumerators who have gone out at one point, or you have a community health worker who's engaging with individuals, and they can just kind of do a quick five minute, this is how you do it, this is how you press one, two. When it asks you to do mm -hmm. this, you do this. Um, you can, we've also designed some visual, uh, visualizations, like little flyers to give out, so people can remember. This is how it works, or like this is how the missed call works, or uh, you know some of those little the little nuances. But a, most of the interventions we've designed and, and the research that we've done has mm -hmm. been based on people's all existing understanding of the phone. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, as I mentioned a little bit with the SMS versus IVR uh, discussion. You don't have to push that many buttons so people get it very quickly. Fantastic. So uh, we have one, I think, last question. And I am going to say that I am no ICT expert, so this may make sense to you, but I have to say it's a little bit over my head. But All right. what is the difference between a survey and a tree? Sounds rather philosophical to me, but you might have a more <laughs> academic answer to that. Yeah, no. So we call it a tree because. You could take a, a survey could be seen as like a really technical thing, right? You, mm -hmm. it, it's, a it's, a, it's a type of, it's a thing you do, it's a survey. You design the mm -hmm. survey instrument. Um, so we call it a tree, you could call it a flow, because it's basically anything you can build that needs some, some flow or conditional logic. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, right. it's a quiz, right? It's like, hey. <laughs> Uh, you you participated in a, in an in person training last week. What do you remember? And you like take a quiz. Uh, it could be labeled kind of something else, but it's just it's just the name. To not Thank you for it. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, I think with that we have come through most of our questions, and um, this was a, a quite uh, rapid overview. But um, um, we do have an opportunity for our folks to email us as a follow-up and also reach out to Melissa. She shared her information. There will be a recording of this webinar available. Um, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. Um, certainly for those of you who are seeking to get your professional development hours, the code is available on the slide. Feel free to email us with additional questions. Uh, we will follow up with an overview of the entire webinar series, including links to recordings, um, and uh, hopefully some additional resources if we can uh, find them. And uh, I'd like to invite everyone to become an E4C member to get information and invitations for our upcoming webinars. And last but not least, thank you, Melissa, for your time today and joining us on this series. Thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you may be. Take care.